Hello, my friends. Welcome back to another video. Before I put you up in the tripod, I would love to show you this one color that I will be using today. This is called Purple Galaxy. Nope, wrong one, Tammy. <laughs> this is called Purple Galaxy. Sold by Color Art. Same creators of the, or creator, I should say, of the primary elements. Do you see that color? No glitter is in this color. That is mica flakes refracting off of the light. Let me turn a flash on in case you didn't get a shot of that. Look at that gorgeousness. So the line that I use for my resin work is called resin art spelt with a Z ends with an E. That is sold on colorart.com. You can use my coupon code Tammy Anderson Art 120 to save 20% off. This color here is Purple Galaxy, and this is a Diamond Galaxy Resin Art color. There are two kinds. There are luster colors, which look more like a, a metallic and then there's the Diamond Galaxy that has all this sparkle that is created by the mica flakes being left bigger. I'll show you that. And that's not the technical term. That's a Tammy term, <laughs> being left bigger. But you can see how chunky those flakes are. And when they're left bigger like that, you get that type of reaction. So again, there is no glitter in this color. It is mica and it is gorgeous. And we are going to use that today along with a couple of other colors that I will show you to make our very own resin coasters. So I'm going to show you this process from beginning to end. Um, it's important to note that if you want to do a, an acrylic pour on these coasters and then coat it with resin, you can also do that. I have a set here that I did exactly just that and I will show them to you. I'm actually going to be using them to show you how to put the cork backs on, but this right here, put on this flash again. This right here is a coaster that I made. First I used, I did an acrylic pour, okay? Let it dry and then I did a pretty coat of resin, just clear coat over the top of it. You, if you go to do an acrylic pour and you varnish instead of resin, you'll be able to peel that paint right off. Plus varnish isn't heat resistance, resistant. I use KS resin. That's the only resin I use because it is the highest heat resistant resin that I, that I have been able to find. And, um, it's non-yellowing, uh, no VOCs, the, you know, the, the harmful chemicals or strong odors that other resins give up. None of that, okay? It's a really good resin. If you order $50 or more, they offer free shipping. Um, they're only in the United States, though. And uh, they even have payment plans. And it's a really awesome company to deal with. That's one of the main reasons why I deal with them too, because they're just awesome, awesome people. So if you're interested in KS resin, giving it a try, I have a coupon code for that also. But my whole point of telling you that was uh, to tell you when making coasters, you need to have a resin that has a height heat tolerance, or you best be telling your clients not to use a hot, hot coffee cup on it. Now, I know that some people swear by, uh, that high heat engine sealant as a coat, coating for their resin, for their coasters. I have tried every brand of that and no matter what I do, if I heat up a microwave in a, a cup in the microwave for a minute and a half to two minutes, like you would with tea or whatever you're drinking, it sticks to the resin. So this is the only one I've found so far that doesn't. So. You can either do actual resin art on coasters or you can do an acrylic pour on a coaster and then once it's dry, coat it with resin. Today we are doing actual resin art on a coaster. Do not mind that jewelry box top sitting there. I just had a little bit of resin left and I wanted to 
coat that before I forgot. So I told you I have that beautiful purple galaxy. I'm also going to be using gold, uh, which is liquid gold. You can use any brand liquid gold in resin. I have a few in my shop. Uh, some call it liquid gold leaf. Some call it liquid gold. But if you go to my Amazon shop, you'll see a couple of different brands there. So I'm using that. I'm also using for my white, my teal, and my purple. I'm using acrylic paint for those. Now normally, I tell you not to use that because it speeds up the work time of your resin. But because I have such a small project to do and... It's not hard to do. I'm comfortable using those. I ran out of uh, resin pigments, like liquid pigments to put for my uh, transparent colors and was going to mix up some resin art tints that they also sell, but I ran out of alcohol ink, so or alcohol. So I chose just to put a little bit of um, acrylic paint here. So I have a teal, I have a purple, and I have a white. So I'm going to get my gloves on. I'm going to strap up, put my mask on, and we're going to go for this. So you want to start out by taking your white and making a puddle on the coaster, and then just randomly drizzling your colors on all of the colors except for the gold. If you want to obtain some lacing and cells, drizzle a little bit of white on top of your puddle of colors and then start blowing around with your heat gun. Once you've blown everything around, you could tilt your coasters around a little bit and play with the design there. It helps create depth. And then, you know, if you have any leftover colors, you can add them in random spots and Move it around a little bit more with the heat gun. Uh, add in a little bit more white to help with the lacing again. And always save your gold for the end uh, when you're done really blowing your colors around because that liquid gold will create some magical cells that look like almost like links of chain in your artwork. So that's what I'm going to be doing now, just adding in some stripes of that and blowing it around. And you'll see what I mean when I give the close-up. It is really a cool effect. And you can only get that effect with either a spray paint that is gold or a liquid leaf that is gold. So now I'm taking some of the resin that has ran off the coasters and putting little ribbons of color through the coasters which really helps a lot with depth. And you will see that resin's really good at one thing and that's not becoming muddy. So feel free to scrape that up off of the table and reuse it. When you're done designing your coasters, just take your finger and run it along the edges and fill them in so that they're fully coated. And you're pretty much done after this part. I mean, they're very simple to make, and I encourage you to do so. So now you're going to let them cure. I'll show you what I got here because it's so hard to see in the camera. Look at the beautiful lacing that um, gold does. Any liquid leaf gold will do that. Mix it into your resin and... Um, it's just a dream. <laughs> so anyway, now you let these cure for 24 hours. Make sure you coat your sides well with your, your finger like you saw me doing. Um, or a stick. I still have to do mine. I'm going to do that now that I'm going to shut off the camera and move on to the next step. But look at how unique. And as you saw, just picking up those puddles of color that fall off makes some really pretty ribbons. 
All right, so let's move on to the next step really quick. And that's a very easy step. So if you did an acrylic pour on your coaster, the next step wouldn't be doing the back. It would be either doing a clear coat of resin to protect the painting, or if you want to take your chances with a uh, high heat tolerant engine spray varnish, you can try that. I wouldn't recommend it. I would just recommend the resin. Those resin coasters that you just saw me do, once they are cured, I will still do a clear top coat over that resin over that resin layer because it makes it look like it's actually uh, I don't want to say 3D but it adds a lot of depth. You can certainly stop those coasters that I just made once they're cured. You can certainly stop there and they will be fine. I just like to put a, a clear coat over that top to protect the colorants and to really give it that glossy professional finish to it, you know? But anyway, so if you did acrylic pouring, you would have to do a, a layer of resin. Now, important, you tape the back of your coasters whenever you do something like this. You do your acrylic pour. A question I get a lot of time is, before I resin, do I remove that tape? Do not remove that tape. You can see here, this was an acrylic pour I did on this coaster. And I already did a resin layer on it. The original tape from the acrylic pour is still there because once that paint dries, it almost creates a really nice seal for you so that when you do your resin coat, it can't seep in under the tape because trust me, there's good tapes out there. But resin, if you don't burnish that tape down good and it, there's not a good contact, we'll find a way to get under that tape, okay? So leave the original tape on if you do an acrylic pour or a resin art coaster like I just did. So the next step would be to put your cork on. This is how I do it. I take my heat gun, I heat up the tape, I remove it, and then I glue these that I get. You can get them off Amazon. You can get them at Joann's, Michael's, Hobby Lobby. Um, sorry, my ice maker is dropping ice right now, of course. <laughs> so um, you can buy these cork backs for coasters. The average coaster is four and a half by four and a half. So that's the size that you want, okay? So. I'm gonna do this on time lapse, but I'm explaining it quick now. You remove this tape, heat it up with your heat gun, it should peel right up. Put some glue down on the back of the coaster. I use E6000, which you can't see, E6000. You're gonna see me dab it on, and then I put this on the back, and then I flip it over and let it sit. Don't worry about putting pressure on it or anything like that, just let it sit. This stuff, dries really, really strong. Uh, another thing you could try is a really strong like Gorilla Glue, something like that, but hot glue is no good. They'll peel, if a customer takes this and tries to pick it up with hot glue, it'll come right off if they pick hard enough. You want a really good glue. Normally, I use Crazy Glue and E6000, but I can't seem to find my bottle of Crazy Glue. So this is plenty though, okay? So here we go, let's do this. So after you're done heating up the back of your coaster, your tape and resin drips should peel right off. And then it's time for glue. You just grab your glue and put some, uh, I like to put some on the outer side, outer edge, and then in the center and press down your cork back and put it to the side and leave it alone. 24 hours later, you will have a beautiful resin coaster. Now, some coasters are a little bit bigger 
than the actual cork backing. So what you can do is take some paint, some acrylic paint, and paint the outer edge of your coasters so that they match the front, just like a black or a white, um, a coordinating color that you had in your, your artwork. Paint the outer edge about an eighth of an inch in and uh, let it dry and then do this step. Normally I do that, but because these coasters I will just be keeping, I'm not going to bother doing that. So there you have it, my friends, how to make your own resin coasters. You can pick these up at Home Depot, the blanks. Uh, I think they're like 16 cents a piece. Um, they're extremely cheap. Now, these ones here I bought at Blick. They were like a dollar a piece because they were ceramic tiles um, for baking and to do uh, ceramic work on. So... Blick is always going to be more expensive, but you can buy cheap bathroom ones at Home Depot, 16 cents a piece, and uh, have some fun with it. Like I said, do your acrylic pours. Um, this, like I said, was a set that I made using uh, primary elements and the bloom technique. I have not done the final coat on them yet, so that's why they look scratchy, but... Um, you can definitely do acrylic pours on them trying to get you to see those primary elements and all their glory. So yeah, that's it. I want to mention a couple of things before I leave. Um, Amazon, if you do your Amazon shopping, whether it be for Christmas, for art supplies, for toilet paper, no matter what it is, if you use my link in the description to get to Amazon, that gives my channel credit no matter what you buy it doesn't have to be art supplies um so if you do that as some of you do already i just want to thank you for that because that's a free way to help and it's just it's tremendously helpful to me so christmas time everybody's on their shopping if you can just use my link to get to amazon it would be a blessing in disguise at this time <laughs> Uh, second of all, I don't know if you noticed or not, but I changed the name of the channel again to Resin It with Tammy A. And here is the reason why. First, I had the official resin channel, which I personally liked, but a couple of people made a point to me and said, you know, a lot of people love your resin work, but they don't know that that's not that that's you that's running the official resin channel because your name is not attached to it. So I said, you know, that's a good point. I went to go change the name of the channel to Tammy Anderson Resin Art. But when I search Tammy Anderson Resin Art, all it's doing is bringing up my old videos on my other channel. So that's no good. So now I have changed it for the third time and hopefully the last. I think this will work. I'm calling it Resinit, R-E-S-I-N, and then the next word, it, I-T, with Tammy A. I'm not using my last name because as soon as I put Resin and Tammy Anderson, my other channel comes up. So just an FYI there. Also, uh, my Etsy shop, 
I'm going to be having a sale this weekend, so check that out. Uh, what else do I want to tell you? My Facebook group, United We Pour Fluid Art Group. Come on over and join us. There's a December challenge going on. Ice maker again. <laughs> December challenge going on uh, to win. There's two prizes this month. Plus, I'm going to be doing something else. Uh, Lisa Wyatt is running that December uh, challenge and uh, it's create an ornament so it's a nice easy challenge to enter and you can win one of two $25 gift cards um, and there's a bunch of great wonderful people and they're sharing art helping each other it's a big happy family so come on over to United We Pour Fluid Art Group again the link is in the description and if you're new to this channel, please subscribe if you haven't already. And I have an acrylic pouring channel that's that's got a ton of videos on it. That's in the description. And that channel is called Tammy Anderson Art. Very simple. I hope you are all having an amazing Friday. I hope you have an even amazing er <laughs> weekend. And until the next time we meet, my friends, don't forget every Friday on this channel, a new resin video. And until next time, next week, next Friday, happy pouring.